Romans chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Father God, I love you. I'm so very grateful, Lord, for your love for me and for us. We stand here today, Lord God, completely empty of ourselves. There's nothing, Lord, in us that is of any greatness or any value. But, Lord, you love us nonetheless, and you keep us. I pray today, Lord, that you'll minister by your word, that you'll speak through this, your word. I ask for the anointing of your Holy Spirit, that you'll enable me, Father, to convey this message. I pray, Lord, you'll touch our hearts, that we would be softened and ready to hear. And I just ask, God, that you be glorified. I just ask that your perfect will would be accomplished in this service, in this hour. And I pray that your name would be glorified. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Some of you are going to remember this message I preached. You're going to remember it by the title, maybe. Growing on the north side of the mountain. Growing on the north side of the mountain. A few years ago, actually, probably about 12 years ago now, I was seeking the Lord on the topic of character. I was asking the Lord to to teach me character, to show me character. It was a message that I believe he wanted me to preach years ago uh, on character. And so I was seeking the Lord as to what character is. Do you, you know what character is? Character is who you are and what you are when no one is looking. When no one else is there, who you are and what you are is character. It's not reputation, necessarily. Reputation is what other people think of you. Reputation is what people uh, see when, when they look upon you or talk to you. Um, and for a Christian, our reputation and our character should be the same. So what we portray in public, we should be in private, but it's not necessarily the case. Reputation is what others think of you. Character is who you are and what you are when there's no one else there to see. And so I was preparing this message. And at the same time, I was reading a, a book, a, a magazine on shipbuilding, S-H-I-P, <laughs> shipbuilding, uh, because I was, you know, at the time I was building ships and bottles. Little hobby I had, uh, don't have too much time to do it these days, but putting ships and bottles and putting ships in light bulbs, and uh, I was looking for a new design. You know, I was kind of getting stagnant doing the same old little schooners, and I wanted something bigger and better. And so I was in this magazine looking for new ship designs, and I came upon an advertisement for a shipbuilding company. And their tagline, their, their, their whole th spiel was, uh, our timber is grown on the north side of the mountain. So I, I guess that's supposed to mean something. Our timber is grown on the north side of the mountain. For, you know, for a city boy like me, that means nothing at all. I, I could, so I did a little research. I went to look to see, well, what does that mean? Your, your wood, your timber is grown on the north side of the mountain. The north side of the mountain generally gets the most snow in the year. Did you know that? Did you know that the north side... Don't, don't shake your head yes, you make me feel stupid. I didn't know that. <laughs> the north side of the mountain gets the stronger wind. The cold, it's coldest on the north side of the mountain. The climate is worse on the north side. The north side of the mountain are the harshest, it's the harshest environment. So what they were saying is these trees that are grown on the north side of the mountain grow against these adverse conditions. They grow against the cold and against the wind and against their climate. And so, by doing so, every fiber of their timber grows to be resilient and strong. Because for its whole life, it is resisting the wind, it's resisting the cold, it's resisting the, their, their, uh, the adversity. 
And so it grows to be strong. And so what this company was saying, their advertisement was st stating in essence that our ships are built from strong stuff. And you could buy our ship and it's going to sail well because it has been tested. The very fibers that it's made out of have been tested as it's grown. And so if, if, it, if the tree st stood strong against that climate, the materials will stand strong against any seas that you face. Our ships are made from strong stuff. Friends, uh, it is no different with Christian character. Our Christian character uh, should be made of materials that have stood the test. Our Christian character, friends, uh, we are often grown on the north side of the mountain. God often has us growing on the north side of the, of the mountain in harsh climates that we might grow to be resilient against our adversity. While I was seeking the Lord on this subject... This is on character. A few years back, this is when I lived in Stratford. It just so happened that my bathroom sink began to leak. So I got up underneath there being the do-it-yourselfer that I am. And I, I noticed that the drain pipe was loose. I don't know why, but it was. And it was leaking through the, back, through the loose drain pipe. And then I, I questioned, well, so why is it leaking? So there must be a clog. There, there has to be... So, I got underneath there and I took out the plug from the, from the trap and out ran sludge. Disgusting, you know what sludge is, disgusting sludge, black, gooky, smelly sludge. All over me, all over my clothes, all over the floor, sludge all over the place. So now, okay, I clean out, the, I clean out that and, I, and I, I'm going to have to tighten up this Drain pipe, no problem. Do it yourself, or no problem. So I go to screw the plug back in the, ta the trap, and I realize that the threads are stripped. All right, this too shall pass. God is building character. No problem. I know what I'll do. I'll go to Home Depot. I lived at the time five minutes away. I'll go to Home Depot. It's 9 o'clock at night. Home Depot closes at 10. I got an hour. Not a problem. I'll run there. I make my materials list. I need a trap. I need a plastic drain pipe. Um... Uh, I'm all set. I go to Home Depot, I get the stuff, and I come back home. While I go to take off the drain pipe, my, I notice that my pipe wrench won't swing inside of the cabinet underneath the sink. Okay, you know what I'll do? I know what I need to do. I need to pull the sink away from the wall so I could get at the pipe. Okay, all right, so I'm going to run downstairs, turn off the water supply, uh, Come back upstairs, disconnect the sink, pull it away from the wall, take the pipe and, and take the, the thing apart. Okay, I got this. I run downstairs, turn off the water, come back up, start taking off the pipe. And in the, in the process, I cut myself several times. So now I've got blood, sludge, water, stink, dirt all over me. And I can't wash because the water's shut off. I can't turn the water back on until I fix the sink so I can put the sink back. And, you know, you get the picture here. Character building, this too shall pass, I'm okay. So I do it, I, get the, I cut the plastic pipe to put on the new drain pipe, and I reach for that miracle uh, material called pipe cement, you know, that little can, and I, I open it up and I realize that it is dried. It's old, and it's dried. And then I remembered that sweet little lady at the counter saying, Sir, do you have everything do you, you need? Do you have pipe cement? And I said, yes, because I saw it on the shelf before I left. I know right where it is. Now it's 11 o'clock. Home Depot's closed. You know, I, I can't get uh, pipe cement. I can't finish the job. I, I'm full of sludge, mu blood, water, stink. I can't take a shower because I can't hook up the sink again. And, you know, and I'm, and I'm st God is building character. This too shall pass. I'm preparing again to preach this message. 
I, I, this week the Lord impressed upon me that this, I would preach again uh, to this church. And so as I'm preparing for this message yesterday, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to go to the gym and work out like I do, you know, a couple times a week. And I'm on my way to the gym. It just started raining. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking about all these things. And um, I get in the car and I'm heading down the road. And, um, you know, I wanted a convertible my whole life. <laughs> And, and through the grace of God and my friend Ralph, I had great, this great opportunity to purchase a convertible for the first time in my life at a very great price. And I, I have enjoyed every moment of that car. But uh, a car stopped in front of me, and I didn't. And I totaled the car. It's, it's total. It, it, yeah. Amen. No one, this too will pass. You know, it could have been a lot worse. No one was hurt. No one was killed. You know, no, no great loss. I have insurance. You know, thank God for insurance. It's just a car. You know, this too shall pass. And, I, and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, if this is all we had to deal with in life, you know, that's not that bad. The pipe, you know, a band-aid on the cut. The pipe, if, if I can't fix it, I call a plumber. No big deal. You know, this too will pass. And, and I got insurance and nobody's hurt. You know, and, and that's fine. I got other cars, thank God, by His grace. And this too shall pass. And friends, most of our problem, friend, most of my problems aren't that easy. And most of your problems, or many of your problems, are not that easy. For most of us, our problems are far greater than that. If that's all we had to deal with, if all we had to deal with was a leaky sink or a, or a minor inconvenience, friends, we would be fine. But life isn't that way. God will often grow us on the north side of the mountain. And, and oftentimes the trials we face are greater than just a leaky pipe. And the trial itself is not the important thing. I know some of you are going through things and some of you will go through things and the trial itself is not necessarily the important thing. Look, at when I stand before God, and we all will, we're going to give an account for our lives. And when I stand before God, I, I doubt very much that my sink is going to come up in conversation. I really don't think God is going to ask me, well, you know, how did you feel about that? And, you know, did, uh, why didn't you get the cement when you... No, God's not going to ask me that. And he's not going to ask me, well, you know, was I going too fast for the road conditions or anything? like My car is not going to come up in conversation, but I'll tell you what will. I believe what will come up in conversation is how did I handle it? And your trials, the trial itself is not the issue. The issue, friends, that we will give an account for is how we handle it. Do we explode under pressure do we, or do we grow? Like the tree, the timber on the north side, do we allow the fibers of our being to grow resilient, to stand against those trials? Do we, do we allow those trials to work in us God's will? Your trial today is not so much the issue, but how you will handle it is. See, we came to God through Jesus Christ. If you have come to Him, if you have not, then I urge you today to surrender your life to Christ but we came to Christ and we expected, if you, were, if you were prepped properly, if you were taught well, you, when you came to Jesus, expected some changes to be made. Did you not? If you didn't, you should have. There, there will be, God will make changes in our lives. And, and one of the things He changes, one of the things God wants to change about us is our character. He wants our character to grow. He wants to make sweeping changes in our lives to build character. And friends, it doesn't just come by, by sitting in our seats. We say, well, God, work in me, change me, uh, build character in me. And we, you know, some of us just expect it to instantly appear. Like overnight, we're going to wake up and we're going to be men and women of great character. How many know it doesn't work that way? Trials come to build character, but trials themselves, friends, uh, uh, character is not necessarily a natural result of our trials and tribulation. The trial itself does not cause one to grow in character. It depends entirely upon the spirit in which we accept it. What matters is how we react 
to those adverse conditions, how we react to the cold and the wind and the climate. It's our attitude and willingness to endure that determines character. Are you with me? We could throw the wrench through the wall. Huh. We could cuss the pipe, curse the car, or we could allow the trial, we could allow this experience, uh, this, uh, this endurance to work God's perfect plan in our lives. Now this is a three-part message. The first part today, the next two weeks. I'll be finishing this message. If you're here uh, today, you, you have to be here the next two weeks. That's, that's the rules. Or you won't, get the you won't get the whole story. Now, the first thing I want to talk about this morning is the method by which we grow. Tribulation worketh patience. I hope you have Romans 5 open and hold on to that text. Tribulation worketh patience, Paul says. Tribulation works patience. Many, most of us, most people want to disagree with this. Tribulation doesn't work patience. What happens when you're in, in a trial? What, for most of us, what happens? I'm, I want to get to the end of this thing. And so we pull the resources and, and we reach for things and we say, well, who can I call? Who can help? I've got to get out of this. We don't, we don't become patient. We become sometimes impatient and we begin to grasp at straws. How can I fix my problem? Who can I call? Who is there that can help? I've got to fix this thing. And we become impatient. And very often, it's the domino effect, the law of diminishing return. And so we, we begin to try and fix the problem ourselves, grasping at solutions. And what, what happens? We, we find that instead of fixing the problem, we've actually made it worse. Amen. We've exasperated the situation. We, we, we've caused more problems uh, because we, we attempted in our... See, for, rather than waiting on God to see how He will work, rather than looking to see God's will in the midst of it, we plot and scheme and plan to try and fix it ourselves. And we become impatient and try and solve the problem ourselves. And we miss an opportunity to grow character. We miss the opportunity. I had a great Bible college professor always used to say, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And it is absolutely true. Whatever doesn't kill you is going to build in you character. It, it, it has to be. He says that tribulation or trial worketh patience. This word patience is more than passive endurance. How many in, in, in the midst of a trial let me put it this way. If you're like me, in the midst of trials, some, I've been in some trials where I wanted to crawl into the fetal position and throw my thumb in my mouth. You know what I mean? Overwhelming. I just want, I just want, to, I, I just want it to go away. I'm, I'm enduring. No, I'm not. I'm hiding. This word, uh, patience, is not just hiding and, and, and hoping it goes away. This is an action word. This, this word, patience. Listen, Paul, he paints a different picture than just hoping it all goes away. This endurance is active. It's, it's steadily moving ahead. Think of that tree growing in its adverse conditions. It, it continues to grow. And, and it continues to fight against the wind and to fight against the cold. It, it grows. It's resilient. It's not just hoping to survive. It's, it's going forward. It's growing in strength against its conditions. See, friends, for us, in the middle of our trials, we have to stay the course. We have to keep on going keep, and, and fight against the climate in which we're in. Endurance, patience is not just hiding, but it's, it's you got to keep on going. See, in every trial in life, there are two basic choices. I mean, there's many other sub-choices, but two basic choices. You either lay down and die, you quit. This is overwhelming, I can't take it, take it anymore, I give up. Or you keep on going. I don't know if there's any other real choice. I mean, again... Sub choices, but that's it. You either you either give up and, and forget the whole thing and, and, and die, or you keep on going. That's basically it. Two choices. In this life, friends, there will be tribulation. There will be trials. No one gets out of here alive. We're going to face difficult times. 
And in the midst of the trial, what's important to note is that, uh, that our trials, friends, uh, it doesn't mean that you don't have faith. And it doesn't mean that you're a failure when things don't go right and, and it seems to be overwhelming and the trials are great. It doesn't mean that you don't have faith. I, I, come, I, I rebuke that lie that the enemy tells. You, some of you have heard that lie. That it's your fault and you don't have faith and you're a failure because you've tried and it's failed and you're, you're under these trials. No, some of the greatest Christians I know are some of the most tested People that are under major trials are some of the most faithful people, full of faith. Amen. God will grow us on the north side. He'll grow us on the north side. Look at sometimes, friends, loss of loved ones is tremendously painful. Bitterness of health, abandonment of those that you love, that's harsh. It's hard. It's, it's like the cold and the wind of the north side. And these things happen and they do come to us. Sometimes, friends, no one understands and you, and you, no one. Sometimes there's not a single soul that understands. And not that there's not enough, not that there's not a myriad of advisors. Not that there's not tons of counsel. Oh, you could always find counsel. You could always find advice. There's an abundance of advice. God's little helpers running all over the place doing the Lord's work and telling everyone what they're supposed to do. It's like my friend used to have a sign on his desk, take my advice. I'm not using it. <laughs> and how many are quick to give advice? Oh, you, you, know, you must do this. You should do this. Friends. Nobody lives in your house and nobody lives in your shoes. And no one knows. No one knows. And you stand there alone and you say, oh my God, what am I supposed to do in this situation? No one knows. Friends, you're growing on the north side of the mountain. You're growing. God is working in you. He's building something in you far greater than you can, you can see. Paul understood this. The apostle Paul, he understood this. Listen, he was not one to simply give advice off the cuff. He wrote this to us. The Holy Spirit, of course, and, uh, uh, inspired him to. But listen to him. Listen to the... He knew tribulation. The Bible says that he was five times beaten with 39 stripes. Are you still with me? Amen. 39 stripes. Five times. See, the Romans had this, this terrible punishment, this torture. And uh, they would beat people. And as they would whip people and beat people, they found that um, the... the uh, the borderline was about 40 stripes. You, you get hit 40 times with the whip, you died. And so they kind of did the average, and at right about 40 people would die. And so what they did was they would withhold one stripe. So they would beat a person with 39. In, a, in essence, beating them to within an inch of their life. And Paul was beaten five times with 39 stripes. If you're a mathematician, that's 195 times with a cat and nine tails, with a whip. Three times he was, he was beaten with a rod. That's a cane. That's a small club. He was beaten three times with that. Listen to what he says. Once stoned. They stoned him thinking that he was dead. They stoned him literally in their minds to death. But God spared him. Thrice he was shipwrecked. He was, he was lost at sea. Three times. Weariness, painfulness, watchings. That means sleeplessness. Nights upon nights without sleep. Sleeplessness often, hungry and thirsty, cold and naked and in peril. This is Paul's life. So when Paul talks about trials and tribulations, I'm all ears. And listen to what he says about this, about all of these trials. He says, in all this, Paul said, we glory in tribulation. <laughs> we glory. Preacher, I'm not there yet. I, I, I'm not. He's saying we rejoice in our trials. We grow on the north side. Listen, he says, tribulation worketh patience. Still there? Amen. That word patience in Greek is hupomone. It means to wait long past the time everyone else has gone. Our trials build in us this patience. That word means to, to be able to wait long past the time everyone else has gone. You know, when trials come and you're standing there with the multitudes and, 
and people quit and they give up and they turn and they leave and, and you're, and, and, but you are still standing. That's what this word means. Our trials give us that patient endurance to where we could stand long past the time everyone else has left. Look, friends, when I'm in trial, I long to have people around me. I love to have people with me. I long to and love to look around and see all the smiling faces of people standing arm in arm with me. And, and I look to look behind me. I would love to see a multitude, an army behind me saying, we're standing there with you, brother. We're, we're going to see this thing. I would love to, but that's not always the case. How many know that most of the time, and when, when it comes down to it, when the rubber meets the road, as it were, brass tacks, bottom line, you stand alone. And Paul, by the Holy Spirit, is telling us that the trials that we endure in life will build in us this sense of, of patient endurance that will enable us to stand long past the time everyone else has gone. It's saying that when you're standing, even if you stand alone, you will you will stand. Paul understood this. He understood this. Listen. He says, patience. This patience worketh experience. You still with me? Amen. This patient endurance worketh experience. The word experience means a proven character or tested. The, the trials work in us patience. This patience enables us to have this sense of experience, which is proven character or tested. Not uh, been there, done that. Been there, done that. Bought the t-shirt, sent the postcards, took all the pictures, got the memories. No, this is been there, done that, and learned. Because <laughs> there's a big difference from just being there and learning. So what Paul is teaching us in this is that our trials, which will birth, birth in us this patient endurance, will give us that sense of experience. We will learn of it in the midst. Listen to what James says. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth. Hupomone. Blessed is the man that endureth, or or. Is patient for when he is tried, the same word as experience here. When he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Listen to this when he has been put to the test, when our trials work patience, putting us to the test, trying our very fiber, when we, when this person has been proven. I'm a gun enthusiast. It means I'm enthusiastic about guns. I have some. I like them. Uh, ever since I was in the army, I like to shoot things. It's just fun. <laughs> uh, I won't ever, I promise you, I won't do that. Uh, but I, I know about guns. This, most good gun manufacturers will test their weapons uh, with a charge greater than what the gun has been made to handle. So, instant, for instance, if the gun has been made to handle a bullet with 200 grain, all right, gunpowder, so made to handle 200 grain, they'll test it in their shops with 300 grain. In other words, they'll put in a greater charge than that gun was ever made to handle. In other words, whatever doesn't blow up makes it down the assembly line. <laughs> and so they put it under great charges, under great stress, under circumstances that are far beyond the envelope. And if it endures under those conditions, then they know it's going to endure under normal operations. And so they market these guns that have been tested. They have a seal of approval. They have experience. It's, this word means, uh, Paul says, when he is tried. It means acquiring the quality of triedness. Don't leave me now. It means, it means acquiring the quality of triedness. It, it means becoming certified. Certified is true. Getting the certificate of authenticity. Uh, this, this product, this person has been tried and tested and is authentic. And there's a seal of approval. That's what trials will work in us. This patient endurance which will give us this 
uh, uh, let us acquire this state and character of having been proven and being certified as authentic. The, or the real McCoy. You know what a McCoy is, by the way? McCoy, there's so many things. I've heard a lot. A McCoy, McCoy Pottery Company in America back in the uh, 19th and 20th century. McCoy Pottery Company made McCoy uh, dishes, uh, you know, gravy boats and, uh, you know, the like. McCoy. And it was so popular that people uh, made knockoffs. Like, you know, you ever watch the uh, Antique Roadshow or any of these, you know? They made knockoffs of these things. And so the market was flooded with these fake McCoys. And so what they did was they, they stamp in the bottom of the McCoy uh, their emblem and a number. And that number was given a certificate of authenticity. So if you owned a McCoy, you had the number of office and, office and authenticity. Often, it was so easy, so much easier this morning. You have that, stating that this is the real McCoy. It, it has the certificate that goes along with it. It has been proven and tested and analyzed, and this is the real deal. This is what Paul's saying. Our trials and our patient endurance will bring us to that place where we are the real McCoy. We've been tried and tested, and we stand, and we're certified. God wants us to have that certification. Certification. I really can speak. I really can. One who faithfully, patiently endures gets the stamp of certification. Right, hon? You said it right. Certification. This will bring hope. So that's what we need right about now. We need some hope. We got sludge, we got blood. We got cars, we got, we got trials, we got tribulation. We need hope. Hope, friends. Listen, we are, we're leaving the shadows into the sunshine here. What a cheerful word hope is. When you're in the middle of your trial and somebody comes with hope, doesn't it make all the difference in the world? There's light at the end of the tunnel. You're in trouble when you read the sign that says the light at the end of the tunnel will be turned off due to budget cuts. <laughs> or when you find out that the light at the end of the tunnel is an oncoming train, you're in big trouble. That's never going to happen with God. When you are trusting Him and you're patiently enduring the trials that He allows in your life, He's growing you on the north side of the mountain. And He offers to us hope. And that hope is a hope that won't leave you ashamed. At the end of this thing, when you stand there, you say, I'm hoping in God, you're not going to be disappointed. You won't be confounded. It's going to work out on your behalf because God is the one who promises you the hope. Amen. He's the one who's growing in you some fiber to stand against all odds. Listen, he is more than able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He's working in us, friends, making us what He wants us to be. That light at the end of the tunnel is not about to go out, and it never will. This hope maketh not ashamed. In other words, we don't need to worry. We don't need to fret. In the midst of the trial, I don't know what the answer is. In the middle of this thing, I don't have the resources. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. But I put my hope in Christ. And I know that He's building in me something that I can't yet see. And I know that it will be good at the end. He's given me His Word. Amen. And so I have hope in His Word. And, it, and I will not be confounded. I will not be ashamed. The outcome is in His hands. Amen. As I come to the end of this message, friends, I know... As Sandy Patty used to sing, if we are in His hands, so are the trials. See, we're, we're, we're sometimes so overwhelmed because all we see around us are, are the difficulties. All we see and hear are the pressures that surround us. And we feel like we're all, absolutely all alone. No one understands. There's nobody here to help. But if you've come to Christ, if you've come to God through Jesus Christ, you're in His hands. 
And he said, none, no one is going to snatch you from his hands. And so if you're in the middle of a trial, so are the, you are in his hands and so are the trials. He's got it under control. He's working it all out for, for the good of them who love him and are called according to his purpose. One last thought as I close. In Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 5, God speaking through Jeremiah, he says, If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trustest they wearied thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? God through Jeremiah says, if, you, if you've run with the footmen and they have worn you out, how are you going to run with the horses? If you have not endured the trials that you face now, how are you going to stand when you face the real ones? How are you going to stand when you face the big ones? So we have to allow that, that the, 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 the working, the, the, difficult, the tribulations in our lives to work patience, that ability to endure so that God can build in us that experience, that, that certification where we can stand against those things that are yet to come. God is growing us on the north side of the mountain. And He wants us to mature and grow in character. If we've not endured the trials thus far, how can we think we'll be prepared for what lies ahead? Listen, whatever doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And whatever trials we face in this life, if we endure patiently, if we trust in the Lord, He will allow that, those trials to build in us resilience. He will allow the fibers of our being to stand against the wind and the, and the climate and the adversity. And, 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 and He will allow us then to, to, to have that test, that, 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 that certificate of authenticity that we are able, that we are His and He is ours. Amen. Amen. If you've never known the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've never come to Him in repentance of your sin, you, then you face those adversities alone. You stand there in your own strength and all of your resources have failed. Would you consider coming to Christ today and allowing Him to be the one who builds in you? Would you, would you allow Him to come to your rescue and your aid today? Would you give your life to Him? And child of God, you're going through trials today or you see perhaps those on the horizon would you allow the Spirit of God to work in you? And, and, and instead, of, instead of cussing the wind or cursing the storms, instead of fretting or, 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 or giving up in the midst of it, saying it's overwhelming, I can't handle it, would you be willing to allow God's Holy Spirit to work through you? Amen. To take these trials and to build in you that fiber to stand? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that...